Hi, my name is Mayhem Star, and welcome to Nothing Special. Cold. It's cold. It's so cold. How long can my body go on? It's freezing. I'm drenched. The ties are cutting into my skin. The pain doesn't get better with time. It's the same relentless throbbing. What was that noise? It's footsteps. Very familiar footsteps. The sound of leather boots sinking into the mud. Seems like she's back. I can't tell if I'm relieved or terrified, but what does it matter? All I can focus on is the pain. You're awake, right? Every time I come over, you're sleeping. I'm surprised you managed to sleep so much. Seems pretty uncomfortable down there, but I guess you have nothing better to do. You mean sleeping on the floor? There's nothing I can do to make her release me. I've already tried. I've tried everything. I won't make the mistake of engaging with her again. What do you mean? Engaging with her. You spoke to her and she tied you up? Oh, what's that smell? It's awful. Don't tell me you... We pissed and shit ourselves? No, oh, no. Was it really that urgent? You really couldn't wait for me to come back? I know it's been a while, but... Wait, are we outside? Are we outside? I think we're outside. You've tied us to something. Or you've tied us down to the ground and we've been here for a long time. So long, in fact, that we've... Piss and shit ourselves. What are you? You didn't do this on purpose, right? To attract search dogs or something. No, no you wouldn't do that. Can search dogs search for or sniff for human excrement? A blinding light hits me. It's coming from behind her. A flashlight, maybe. Does she have someone else with her? There's no way there's another one like her. Now we'll have to clean you up. It's gonna get real difficult to take care of you. I never signed up to be a babysitter. He made it very hard for me. Oh well. Let's remove the gag. You know the drill. I take a deep breath of air as she rips that thing off my jaw. The air is nice, isn't it? Me. Cold shoulder, hmm? I'd say that's better than the crying. We're making progress. Today we will skip the usual chores. I have a big surprise for you. I admit I let you stay here longer than planned, but life's busy, you know. As an adult, I have a lot of responsibilities. I can't just sit home and draw all day. You? It's hard out there for us normal people. Luckily, my living conditions changed, so guess what? You can come home with me. It will be dry and warm. And not only that, my attention will be fully on you. All day, at least, for a while. Isn't that great? I'm sure you're thrilled to get away from here. Her house. Is that really better than the forest? It's easier finding people in forests, isn't it? I can't say I hate the idea though. I'm gonna die if I stay here any longer. And by the way, do you feel any pain anywhere? Her wrists. She's gotta be kidding me. Don't let her get you angry again. Just answer normally. Everything hurts. I can't feel my feet. Oh, that's not good. It must have been pretty cold. We're dying to hypothermia. Take us home, feed us, look after us. You're pretty cute, look after us like the good dog that we are. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's not good. It must have been pretty cold. Let's see if they warm up when we're inside. I can get you some painkillers as well. Painkillers aren't going to remove these zip ties. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Just hold out a little longer. It must only be a mild frostbite, so it will heal by itself. Mild frostbite heals by itself? I don't remember ever hearing about that. Is she talking about my feet? I guess she only hears what she wants. You were lucky. Think about it. At least you weren't eaten by an animal. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I don't think they eat humans alive. Um, except rats maybe. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to put these on, for safety reasons. She waves a blindfold in front of my face before putting it on, tightly. I know last time has been difficult with traveling and I apologize for the bruises, but I got some help this time so everything should go smoothly. Help. So it really is another person. Caught by two psychopaths. How the hell am I going to survive this? We'll see each other in my room. Play nice alright? There's no use in resisting. She grabs me by the collar of my jacket and drags me through the mud. It's painful. We stop and I hear a car door opening. Another person's footsteps are coming towards me. Both of them pick me up to shove me in the back seat. 
they close the doors and start driving. The drive is long and they sit in silence, not saying a single word. I try sleeping but it's impossible with the anxiety. After what feels like many hours, the car stops for good. Seems like we arrived. The door opens and they carry me out. They're more careful in doing so this time. I hear a door opening and can feel them carrying me up some stairs, followed by dropping me to the ground like a garbage bag. So much about being gentle, maybe they just had to stay quiet outside. Does this mean that there are people around here? That would increase my probability of survival. Faintly I can hear her whispering thanks to the other person before she comes in and shuts the door. She removes my blindfold. Hmm. The red walls give the illusion of being in hell for a split second. Turns out we're just in a normal looking room. Not what I expected from a kidnapper. A basement would have been more fitting. My attention goes back to her. Or perhaps we've been brought to her bedroom where we can be worshipped. Hello again. Welcome to my room. Huh. All alone. In my room. I'm glad. Looks nice, doesn't it? I clean everything for you. I'm assuming you're the type of person that has garbage bags and uh, lying all over the floor with open cans of Red Bull in every corner of your room. Maybe I should have done that after you came. Your smell is going to linger, but oh well, I'm not going to do it twice. Take it all in. No rush. My own smell? Or of my surroundings? Or you, perhaps? I'll bring you some food, and after that, let's get you clean and warm. Don't try anything funny while I'm gone. Seriously. She leaves and shuts the door behind her. This is bad. No one will find me here. I'm tied up, but even if I wasn't, could I run a walk? My feet are in pretty bad condition. Can't do anything at all. I might as well look around. Can I click on things? I can click on things. Um... I can look at her posters, I guess. It's my art. Printed out. Are we an artist? Are we an artist that has been kidnapped by a fan? Do you know what this reminds me of? Misery. Stephen King's Misery. I feel a shiver go down my spine. That must mean she knows me from online. I had no idea. I can look around more but there doesn't seem to be anything more interesting. Are you sure about that? I've seen enough. She knows me from online. Looks like this is some sort of stalker. This is bad. I assumed it was a ransom situation. I guess it makes more sense. I haven't had any contact with my family in so long. They have a bit of money but not that much. And who knows if they'd even waste it to save me. Why me then? Is it because I'm an artist? I've never heard of that happening. And there are so many artists better than me. Well, much like the person in Misery, oh, well, I think the Misery, the person in Misery was an author, and I think they were best-selling, but I can't quite remember. Either way. Also, how the hell did she find me? I really have to get out of here. Who knows what she's capable of? I'm back. I wanted to get your favorite food for today, but things got in between, especially money. The fridge is as empty as can be. Uh, more importantly, why does your room look so big? Which suggests to me you have a very big home, yet you have no money and your fridge is empty. And you look pretty young, which brings up the question, where are your parents? And who is this other person that's helping you? A brother? A friend? Maybe it is the parent. Uh, more importantly... More importantly, what did you bring for me to eat? The fridge is as empty as can be. So I got you some oatmeal for now. You must be so hungry. I mean, oatmeal's not the worst thing, right? Yeah, I guess so. I'll feed you, as usual. Yay! Let's get that off. She removed the gag. What would happen if I screamed? The risk is too high. Well, she'll just shove oatmeal in our mouths and we won't be able to scream anymore. Time for your meal. I don't have a spoon this time. I've got it out there. Oh, would you mind feeding it to me mouth to mouth? That's a joke. She doesn't have silverware here. I don't believe that. I hope that's alright. My hands are clean. And you're dirty anyways, so it doesn't matter if we make a mess. Well, it matters a little bit since I had to clean so much. So let's be careful. I hate cleaning. I know it's weird to eat out of my hand, but you're not grossed out by me, right? No, definitely not. What is she planning? Well, if you have no objections, say ah. Uh, save. Here. Return. Eat. 
I have no choice but to go along. Yay! Reluctantly, I opened my mouth. Oh, good thing. There you go. Don't bite down on my finger, alright? I won't forgive you. I'll suck on it just a little bit. A little bit. Not too much. Bite down on her fingers. What does she mean? <laughs> her fingers enter my mouth together with the oatmeal. She's using four fingers to shove it in. Why is she putting her hands in my mouth? Hmm. She wipes the food on my tongue but keeps her fingers inside. I'm completely taken aback by this strange pose we're in. Hmm. Did you know that over six billion bacteria live in there? Your mouth, I mean. Mine too, of course. She starts feeling up the insides of my mouth, going over my tongue and teeth. Hmm, that's not so bad. This is okay. It doesn't seem like she's searching for something specific. It feels like she's moving the food around. I don't get it. Is she drugging me? Is this something perverted? It's a bit disgusting. I don't mind though. Someone has to take care of you after all. Is she trying to get a reaction out of me? I can't read her expression. She slides her fingers off my palate as she finally takes them out of my mouth. The food is smeared all over my gums and tongue. I don't know what kind of oatmeal this is, but something about the texture is odd. Here, have another scoop. You're hungry, right? You didn't put shit in our oatmeal, right? Like in uh, Jojo. I, I, I can't get Jojo out of my head whenever I think shit in oatmeal. Okay. Wait, what is that? There is... There's something moving in my mouth. Uh, save. Oh, we're a good boy. We keep eating. I must have imagined it. Open up. Me. There is again, the tingling. What's wrong? You don't like it? I can feel it clearly. Something is crawling on my tongue. What is she feeding me? Worms? I told you. I have nothing else right now. So you got worms from your garden? What kind of sick are you? There's definitely something moving. Picky eater. Hmm? Now take a closer look at the bowl. Those are... Maggots. I'm eating live maggots. They're crawling all around my tongue. They're different sizes. I feel their slimy bodies curl and wriggle around. I have to gag. Uh, are you gagging? Is that bad? I have to get them out. Now. So what, do you normally eat maggots and insects? Weirdo. Don't you dare puke in my room. I won't let you. Hmm? Well, I'll just have to defecate and puke at the same time, and then you'll definitely have to clean up. Her hands are covering my mouth forcefully. The maggot soup is dripping off my face. She's squishing the insects against my skin. I can feel the wriggling inside and outside my mouth now. You are going to swallow that. I, I have no choice. I just want them to stop moving. Start chewing then. I start chewing on them. No matter how hard I chew, I can't kill all of them. Many are too small. No, I can't swallow them alive. I'll feel them go down my throat. And yeah, you should not be eating maggots anyway, because I'm pretty sure some of them can dig through your stomach lining. Dig meaning eat their way through your stomach lining and then start consuming your insides because maggots or some other types of uh, slimy insects tend to have a slime that protects them from your stomach juices, I guess. And that will mean they'll live and they won't be digested. Come on, swallow right now or I'll make you eat it through your nostrils. I have to. Damn it. Big gulp. I can feel them go down in the bulk. Swallowing has never been so agonizingly long. I'm unusually aware of how the food moves down my throat, waiting for the bugs to land in my stomach. At least there, they're dead. Not all of them. Okay. Okay, they're down. I still feel some movement in my mouth. Didn't I get it all? Or is it just my nerves? I swallow again. And again. She loosens the grip and finally lets go of my mouth. Thanks. It wasn't that hard, was it? Sorry for threatening you. I was just joking. I'd have been really annoyed about cleaning it up though. Do you want more? No. Not again. No way. She's not. I'm, uh, I'm full. I see. That's alright. 
Despite difficulties, you are nice today, so I'm happy. You see, good people who listen don't get into trouble. Maybe you can eat more later. It's over, for now. My mouth is completely empty, but I still feel the tingling everywhere, like ants crawling inside my gums. Hopefully the nerves will calm down soon. Let's get you into the bathroom. That smell is kind of unbearable. Yay, we're gonna get washed. She dragged me by the armpits into the bathroom. It's not as clean as my room, but it should be good enough. I mean, based on this picture, it looks pretty damn clean. The water got cold. I'll put some more hot water in. Small room for two people, but we have to deal with it. The window isn't boarded up like in the room. The sun seems to be rising. It's hard to believe that there are ordinary people walking outside this building. Walking by a kidnapper's house without any idea what's going on inside. Maybe I've walked past some places like this myself. I read, very hot water is bad for frostbite. Should be enough then. Time to get you out of those smelly wet clothes. Getting new clothes doesn't sound bad, but I don't know if I want her to see me undressed. It's gonna be a bit difficult. Well, I mean, it's not so bad. I do have a body after all. My eyes widen as I see her take out her knife. What is she planning to do with that? She's gonna cut up our clothes, that's what she's gonna do. Don't worry, I'm not gonna use it on you. I'll try to cut them up and pull them out under the zip ties. Why does she want me tied up so badly? She could just threaten me with her weapon. I need a bath, but should I really let her do this? Hmm, you look very nervous about this. Are you ashamed of me seeing you? I can understand that. You know what? You were good today, so we can scrap that. We'll just bathe you in your clothes. Oh, that, that kind of sucks. That's a joke. I have no idea how we're going to dry you, but whatever makes you more comfortable. I'm taking off these shoes, though. Into the bathtub you go. Ah, it feels very hot. Finally, we can get rid of that stench. Aren't you happy to be in a warm tub? While you soak in there, let's see about your feet. They look pretty bad. All pale and grey. You said they're numb, right? Yes. It must be very painful. We talked about this already. I should have come earlier. I wanted to, but couldn't. Maybe warming them up works fine. Hmm. I'm sorry. I do mean it this time. I know it must have been horrible and painful and very lonely. And you must have been scared. And are still scared. You must be terrified of me. I treated you so poorly. I know I was unbelievably rude, it's just, I'm stressed. I'm really stressed. I'm not used to this responsibility. I'm usually not like this. I can be really kind. I'm sorry you had to see the worst of me. I never wanted it to turn out like this. It's crazy hearing that in this situation, I know. You're right to think that. I would do the same. But since you already think that of me, allow me to be honest. I care more about you than you think. I honestly want you to be happy. I believe you're unbelievably smart. It must have been so hard, since most people are so idiotic. Yeah, this is misery, definitely misery. Knowing that nobody will ever truly understand you, it's awful. Is she trying to flatter me? No, she herself believes that, and she found you online, and she thinks that's how you behave as well. So in her head, she's thinking, hey look, someone just like me. But because she's a little bit demented, she decides to kidnap you because she feels a really, really close connection to you. And I'm not saying that to imply we're the same. We're not. I could never understand. I can only speculate. You're better than me. You're amazing. Why does she talk like she knows me? If you gave me a chance, I can prove it to you. Let's start over, alright? I can be better. I will be better. You won't have to be scared anymore. And in return, I kindly ask you to be better as well. To be calm and hear me out, and not to inconvenience us both. What do you think? Do you want to try being friends? What choice do I have? Okay. Great, as a sign of my trust, I will do you another favor. She pulls out the knife and moves it closer to my skin. I panic but realize she is just trying to cut the zip ties. Maybe I should have brought scissors. Hold still for a moment. There you go. The zip ties have been removed and I can move freely. I only now realize how painful my limbs were. Moving them is almost impossible. I'm not sure if I should have been relieved or not. Her behavior doesn't make sense. I hope that shows you that I won't want to hurt you. I trust you with not betraying me. 
You can finish up showering yourself. Please do take off those dirty clothes though. I have new ones right here and I won't look. Let me know if you need help. She backs off and leans on the wall, pulling out her phone to look at. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make me more comfortable, but it's best to get clean for my sake. I take off my clothes while sitting in the bathtub and finish up with the shower. Dot. All done? Yes. Here are the clothes. They might be a bit too big for you. They aren't mine. Not hers. Can you put it on in the bathtub? Or should I help you out? I'll do it myself. No, of course. Also, you shouldn't try to stand on your feet. That's a bad idea with frostbite. I'll try not to. Okay, okay. I managed to put on the clothes. Are you done dressing up? I put on my pants hastily and tried to get out of the bathtub. What are you doing? Hold on. I'll help you. She comes over and helps me sit down on the bathtub edge. Just ask me for help next time. Dot. You barely talk to me, hmm? Is this Stockholm Syndrome? I think it's Stockholm Syndrome where we become in love with the captor. It's kind of messed up, but it's actually kind of funny though. On one hand, we have a psychopath captor. On the other hand, we have an MC, us, who develops Stockholm Syndrome. That's funny. That's actually really funny. It's not. It's really not. But it's still funny, in my opinion. Remember how much you talked when we first met? You wouldn't shut up, begging and screaming. Calling me every name in the book. <laughs> oh wait, sorry, I shouldn't joke about this. I understand why you're not in the mood to talk. You're probably exhausted. It's not like I miss the insults, it's just... I just like to hear you talk more. It makes me sad to see the energy leave your eyes. And I like your voice. I'm tired. I understand. You can go to bed a little later. I want to spend some time with you first. Hmm, I'll carry you to my room, since you can't walk and all. You should know by now. I'm actually pretty strong. Hold on tight or I might drop you. You have enough injuries already. Putting her arm around my Putting her arms around my torso, she picks me up with ease. Even though I'm not very light at all, she's carrying me like it's nothing. This is getting strange. Back to my room. She's a monster? Question mark. I'll drop you on the bed. <laughs> nice. Uh, I mean, oh no, we're still captive. She lets me down on the bed, notably gentle this time, and goes to sit down in the gaming chair. She has a gaming chair? And no food in the fridge? I hope you're comfortable. How do you like my room? She has a priority straight. It's alright. Thanks. I'm sure my choice of decoration didn't fly over your head. You should be proud. I love everything you do. It's amazing. You really are something else. Your work has helped me so much. I can't begin to describe it. How? I only draw anime girls. That's right. Do not underestimate yourself, you anime girl drawers out there. You make a lot of people's lives very bright and very happy. Keep doing what you do. I was in the bathroom when I discovered it. You saved me, you really did. But you must hear that a lot, and it must be so annoying. Anyone can just say that. I might sound like just another fan, but trust me, I'm not. Oh, no you're not, you've already proven that. She surely isn't just another fan. You must think I'm completely crazy, hmm? I should keep my admiration down. I know it makes me look pathetic, but how could you like someone who is this pathetic? But it's hard to control myself. I must really try my best. Hmm. I really relate to your characters. They're an extension of you, right? Artists always put a lot of themselves in their characters, I know that much. Well, if, if that's to be true, then Rule 34 artists must be drawing themselves. Anyway. Only a real complicated person can fit so much personality in so many characters. At least I think so. Or maybe it's really easy to write them. It makes fictional characters seem kind of shallow, but that's not important. You make them seem deep, and they're fragments of you, so I'm interested in you. People say you should separate the author from the work, but how is that possible? It's all you. It says so much about you. You can't hide anything from others. And I confirmed it. I know everything you ever post online, and it fits. It aligns with your character's way of thinking and personalities. Say what you will, they're all you. You look like you don't believe me. Tell me, don't you lose love for media when you find out the author was an awful human being? Don't you look down on someone's art when you find out they have a weird fetish account? No. Don't you think- <laughs> Don't you think about the singer's life when they sing about their burdens? 
most people who sing about their burdens these days actually don't suffer from any kind of of those burdens. The only people I know for certain who did suffer those burdens are the rappers from like the 1990s and the early 2000s. Those people really did suffer those realities. And when they rap, it comes from the soul, which is why I really like rap. Like rap is raw. Is it impossible to completely separate the work from the creator? You must accept that. By creating things, you put pieces of yourself out in the world. And I found them. Me. The moment you made your first post, that was the moment you exposed yourself. But you know all that, because you feared it, as you should. It's a bad idea to expose yourself to so many people, but then again, if you hadn't, we'd have never met. In the end, I'm glad things turned out the way they did. The doubts I had, they were overwhelming. We all have doubts sometimes, right? <laughs> I almost changed my mind about you. It must have been distressed, almost. Things could have gone so wrong. Oh, do you want to know what my favorite character of yours is? It should be pretty easy to guess, I'll show you. Hey, that that's you. Luna Mariart. Sorry for no drawings, I've been depressed lately. Don't worry though, I'm fine. Anyway, here's a random OC. You look the same, and your phone battery's about to die, please charge that. This one. It's obvious, why isn't it? We're identical. It's like you're my stalker or something. Um, no. A lot of anime characters are made to look like real people, or generally made to look like real people, because therefore people can then identify with them. Like generic male MCs. There's nothing that stands out from the design. See? Exactly. When I saw that, I was shocked. Technically, you should be amazed about meeting me. I made me feel really connected to you. Or rather, it made me feel really connected to you. As if it's fate, you know? I knew I had to know more about you. I can't believe this is what got her interested in me. That's when I messaged you for the commission. I talked to her before. No way. You only drew her twice and never gave her a name. We'll have to change that. Since she's pretty much me, you should name her after me as well. Olivia. My name's Olivia. You can address me like that if you like. I don't know what to say or think. You're very in your head. I can imagine what you're thinking. I'm sure you're curious why you're here and what my goals are. You want me to draw you forever and ever and ever, Olivia. And maybe you hate me a lot. She stands up from the chair and sits down beside me. I look at the ground. How can she be so confident I won't attack her? Maybe we should. She didn't seem to be carrying the gun she had in the forest. Carrying the gun she had in the forest. She has a gun. What the hell? I guess she's relying on her strength and the knife in her pocket. Maybe she is very strong. Despite what you might think, I'm really not some kind of evil villain planning to kill you. If I'm being honest, I don't even have a plan. I really don't. I'm someone who follows my own instinct, but my heart tells me. This is embarrassing, but I think you're in the right place. Here, with me. Do you know what I mean with this? I... I put stupid thoughts in my head and I was bad to you. It was a mistake. We all have those inner struggles, right? They won't win anymore. I won't let the bad thoughts take me over. No doubt. No rumination. I think when things calm down and we settle into a stable environment, you will really like me. Listen, I... I really like you. In... in a romantic way. She locks eyes with mine and seems to eagerly await a response. I'm too speechless to say anything or think straight. I... I might be what you've been missing in your life. You're lonely, are you not? Uh, other people, they will... Other people will disappoint you with their stupidity, with being untrustworthy or abusive. You're untrustworthy and you're also abusive. Anyway. I know you. I'm the only one who knows. I can provide for you, I can protect you, I can give you unconditional affection by feeding me oatmeal with maggots. I'll do your taxes, I'll- You'll do my taxes? <laughs> You'll have a lot of fun with my taxes. I'll handle your clients, I'll- Clients? You'll handle my clients too, you'll do the talking for me. I'll clean the house. I'll cook you amazing food, like- <laughs> Like your maggots with oatmeal. I shower you with love and also give you the space you need. I'm not lying about that. Don't you want someone to cuddle and tell you it's okay? And don't you want that someone to know you inside out? Someone smart? A person you can trust? 
Someone who can remove your burdens, somebody who will make sure harm never comes your way. No other stranger can provide you with anything meaningful. This is your only chance. I admit it, I didn't have much hope before, but I believe in this. Not every deep bond starts off great, but we can make it happen. I'm determined. I want us to create a special bond, don't you? Me. Don't you? I look up at her. Me. Dot. Yes. Yes. Let's go. Woohoo! Ha. Huh. I'm glad. I'm so glad. I'm happy we see it the same way. I was so worried you wouldn't forgive me. I appreciate you. She moves in closer and wraps her arms around me. I flinch. Psh. It's okay. She hugs me very tightly. Let's lie down. What? Yay! Dot. She pulls me into the bed and we both lie down together. Calm down. I have to calm my breathing. She can't feel my high heart rate. It's been a while since you were in the bed. Make yourself as comfortable as you like. Hopefully my warmth helps you to heat up. When was the last time you laid in bed with someone? I imagine it was long ago. It's been a while for me too. I wish I could stay like this forever. Not have any problems or worries. Hmm. You're still cold, but I don't mind. It's still comfortable. Hmm. Huh. Sniff. Ha <laughs> Uh, kunka kunka. Yeah, I, I miss this. It's not fair. It's not. Sniff. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No matter what I do, nothing works out for me. It's all for nothing. Oh, she's crying. For a second I thought she was sniffing us. Okay, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm going mad. It's like I'm stuck in a time loop of agony. The memories never go away. Time doesn't heal at all. I try so hard. So hard. I try more than anybody else, but it never pays off. Sniff. And yet I get up, every time, no matter how hard I was punched down. I gave my whole life, everything, and it's never appreciated, I'm treated like trash. But that's their loss, it's on them, they never deserved my kindness. Why did I waste my time with them, it's embarrassing. But I learned, I learned so much, things I have never known otherwise. So it's okay, I'm the best version of me, thanks to my experiences. Are you sure? Don't. Yeah. I'm being more open than I should. We're not there yet. Sorry about dumping this all on you. You barely know anything about me. Things are hard for me, so you must forgive me for not always being composed. I... Did... W Did we stab her? Huh? Gasp? My thoughts are racing. It's like time stopped. The knife is in her abdomen. I can't tell how deep it is. I'm terrified, but I can't die here. Don't know if I hit anything vital. Oh, yeah, we definitely have Stockholm. I have Stockholm. I have Stockholm right now. Oh no, MC, what the fuck? Oh, I kind of saw this coming. I kind of did, but at the same time. Oh no. I don't know if I hit anything vital. She's still in shock. How many seconds have passed? Ah! She's trying to suppress a scream while trying to get a grip on the knife. I can't let that happen. I quickly slide it out of her and stab her again, this time aiming higher. It seems to slide off the ribcage and only penetrates the skin and muscles. I feel disgusted but I can't stop. I can't hesitate. It's my life or hers. I have to kill her. Ah! She's trying to wrestle me with all she has and is holding onto my arm. The ribcage was a bad idea. I only know one other place that would kill her for sure. But I have to get her to loosen a grip. She's too strong to break free. Fuck. With my right thumb I press into her left eye socket. She swiftly uses her other hand to get me out of her face which allows me to roll on top of her. This distraction isn't enough to make her let go of the knife though. She still has a grip on both of my arms. There's only one thing left to try in this position. With all I have, I throw my head against her face, going for the nose. As our bones collide, I feel a dull pain echoing through my skull. Everything is spinning and the impact is reverberating in my head and neck. Ugh. I'm unsure if I managed to break anything, but I feel her grip loosen as she cries out in pain. I use this opportunity to rip my arm out of her grip. 
My life depends on this strike. If I mess this up, I'll die. With every ounce of strength I have, I slash it into her once again. Ah. I feel everything. I feel the knife entering every layer, each one being more resistant, staring at the collarbone and burying itself deeper into the lower part of her neck. That's it. Not the part I was thinking of, but it should still work. There's no way I didn't hit anything vital. She stops struggling. The knife is buried deep into her neck. She stares at me, lifeless, her grip being as tight as ever, and not showing any other movement. Well, her mouth is filling with blood as she makes attempts to breathe. Her lungs expand and contract, but to no avail. It's sad to see her body struggle like this, desperately trying to stay alive. I look down at the wound and realize how much blood is flowing out of it, despite the knife still being inside. It's all over her chest, and me. It's very warm. Should I take the knife out? Suddenly, I hear something. Shit, shit, someone's coming up the stairs. I forgot about that person. What do I do? They're, they are friends, right? They might have a gun, and I need to protect myself. I wonder how important she is to this person. I might be able to. Carefully, I slide out the knife, leaving a stream of blood to flow down her torso onto the bed. I pick her up and position her in front of me, her back shielding me from possible bullets. Unless they use a high caliber, but they wouldn't shoot her. Right. I suppose they would if they knew she was dead, but they don't. They're standing in front of the door, probably waiting to get some kind of response from her. I lift up the knife and bring it to her neck. My hands are very bloody, so I can't get away pretending I didn't stab her. Her chest is still moving. How long does it take for someone to die from this? Is she still alive? Is she aware of what's happening? The door slams open and a man with a gun pointed at her stands in the doorframe. His expression turns terrified the moment he sees her. What have you done? Me. She's still alive. Put the gun down or I'll kill her. The man stands there motionless. His gun still aimed at us. He seems to be staring at her. As I put the gun down. Reluctantly, he lowers his gun and puts it on the ground. He must have seen her muscle spasms. This is good. Really good. Don't fucking touch her. Listen, she's passed out from the blood loss. She's dying. If you want her to survive, you have to call the ambulance. Right. Now. He just stands there again. This is a matter of seconds. You have to get her an ambulance. Right now. Fuck. Finally, he pulls out his phone and starts dialing. Dot. Hello. I need an ambulance right now. My friend was stabbed. She's bleeding out. She's... 4208 Diane Street. She's lying upstairs. She's dying. Listen. Yes, a girl stabbed her. She's here in the room. No, I don't know her. That doesn't matter. Just send an ambulance. No. No. He seems to hang up in the middle of the conversation and paces around the room nervously. Fucking damn it, Olivia. How could this have happened? We're already under investigation. Why only now? Fuck. You ruined everything. He picks up his gun. My heart stops racing. I'm leaving. You're going to wait here for the ambulance. And if... If she dies, I'm fucking coming for you. Remember that. Before I can respond, he storms out of the room and runs downstairs. A wave of relief washes over me. Dot. Is it over? Is it really over? Is he really gone? How am I still alive? You're alive because you took the opportunity. You took the initiative. Should I be worried about this threat? Should I try to stop her bleeding? I wouldn't do anything. She's already dead. The entire bit is drenched in blood and pooling on the floor. Maybe it will look better in the court case that's about to unfold. I'll probably be labeled a murderer. Oh well. Just call Saul Goodman. I can't bring myself to care right now. I'm just happy to have escaped this alive. I lie here. I don't know for how long. Minutes? Hours? Who knows? Eventually I hear faint sirens outside. That must be them. And I made it. I can't believe I made it. I look up at the ceiling. There must be a corpse on top of me. But that's of no concern to me. I can worry about it all later. For now, I'm safe. Exhaustion overwhelms me, and I close my eyes. Good ending. Enough. Alright, that's pretty damn interesting. That was just a good ending though. Refuse. I'm not gonna eat her food. 
Who knows what you put in it? So, that's how it's going to be. Are you grossed out by my hands? You're really not in a position to be calling other people gross. It's alright though. Quite alright. No food for you then. I can survive without it pretty long. I'm sure I'll be found soon. Maybe another time when you're not being an asshole. I just wish we could talk like adults. Just know that I don't appreciate this. Pretentious and ungrateful people are really unlikable. Well, whatever. No point losing any of my brain cells to this. Phew. I didn't think she'd let it go that easily. Let's get you into the bathroom. That smell is kind of unbearable. She drags me by the armpits into the bathroom. It's not as clean as my room, but it should be good enough. Will it cold? I'll put some hot water in. Okay, yep, we've been through this. Mm -hmm. Here, okay, getting new clothes didn't sound bad, but I don't know if I want her to see me undressed. It's going to be a bit difficult. My eyes widen as I see her take out her knife. What are you going to do with that? Don't worry, I'm not going to use it on you. I'll try to cut them up and pull them out under the zip ties. Why does she want me tied up so badly? Use it to threaten me with a weapon? Need a bath? Should I really let her do this? No. As she crouches down to get a grip on me, I start thrashing myself around to the best of my ability. Okay. So, based on our first choice, we are now resisting. When she uh, tries to cut our zip ties. I barely have any strength. She seems to stop her attempt and stands up again. I keep on thrashing and slowly get out of breath. The adrenaline doesn't last long at all and my exhaustion kicks in again. My motion gets slow and look up at her. Dots. Are you done yet? I wheeze and I give up. My body immediately goes limp again. I suppose you really want to keep on those clothes. That makes things more difficult, but sure, I'll run with it. We'll just bathe you with them on. I guess that saves time. Even if it's very inconvenient. Next time you can just ask me instead of acting like a snail being salted. I'm taking your shoes off. Please don't do that again. Into the bathtub you go. No, it feels very hot. Finally, we can get rid of that stench. Aren't you happy to be in a warm tub? I'll let you soak in there for a bit to warm up. Hmm. You know, I get that you aren't feeling great right now. Being in that forest must have been awful. That's how life is, though. She's talking like she isn't the cause of my misery. Misery. I had an awful week as well. My stress levels are off the roof. And then I had to take care of you on top of all that. She has no empathy whatsoever. Why do I even listen to her rambling? The least you could do is make it easier for me, but I suppose you don't care at all. I mean, I get it. You're tied up and all, but I just think it's disproportional how much we give each other. I cared a lot about you, and I did so much. I came almost every day to feed and clean you. And all you do is be a big baby. It's my fault, I guess. I should have lowered my standards and expectations. I will change that from now on. I'll treat you like you treat me. Let's see how you like that. Uh, the least you could do is apologize. Whatever. What's it matter now? It doesn't. Forget I said anything. We should talk about something else. Hmm, um, I've been wondering. Do you have a partner? What? You look confused. Is that really a weird question for you? I guess it's not something you hear often. I have no idea what her intentions are. She should know I have no partner if she was stalking me. It's an awkward topic, I know. I was just curious. I couldn't find anything on that, so I guess you don't have one. It's difficult to know, with online relationships and all that, believe it or not, but I haven't been in a relationship either, at least not a true one. Just fleeting interactions, romantic failures and mistakes. I've been pretty unlucky, and that hasn't changed to this day. Even though I make a big effort to find someone, I always fail. Oh well. Let's finish up your shower, you should be warm enough. That's all. She's not going to make some passive-aggressive comment? What's the point of the question? I guess she has nobody else to talk to. The zip ties are a hindrance, but we should still be able to get it done. I'll have to get you clean, so don't make too much of a fuss. If you aren't weird about it, I won't be either. I'll let her finish showering me. That. Done. You're all clean, I think. Your reeking clothes make it hard to tell. They call it the bath wasn't completely brown, but it's all down the drain now, luckily. I've got to clean the bathtub too now. I got new clothes for you. They're pretty large, so they should fit you well enough. How do we get them on you though? I suppose I have no choice but to untie you. I'm sure you're happy to hear that, but don't even think about trying something stupid. She takes out a knife and cuts the ties. Relief washes over me as I'm able to relax my limbs again. You got some bruising from them, but nothing too bad. Here are the clothes. Hurry up with the changing. 
The clothes she gave me really are large in size and seem to be made for men. Are these really hers? She waits for me with her knife still in hand. I don't think I'm a threat in my condition, but who knows what she's thinking. Sanding probably isn't a good idea with the frostbitten feet. With difficulty, I managed to get dressed while sitting in the bathtub. Alright, finally, back to the bedroom. You can't walk, hmm? That's an issue. I guess you'll have to crawl. As if I wasn't humiliated enough, she must be enjoying her power trip. Come on, we don't have all day. I mean, given how... It's an, it's an interesting one. I mean, if we behave better, she would treat us better at the same time. Having that in retrospect, anyway. Hesitantly, I pull myself out of the bathtub and start crawling towards the door on all fours. Haha. <laughs> Sorry, you look ridiculous. It's kind of fitting, since you are acting like a baby and all. I ignore her insults and make it to the room. She follows behind me. Get on the bed, please. Despite my mind telling me not to, I follow her orders and pull myself up on her bed. It would have felt good to be in a bed again if it wasn't in a room with a mentally unstable kidnapper. She sits down in the gaming chair opposite to me. I'm sure you noticed already, but as you can see, I'm a big fan of your work. I bought all your merch. I know all your characters. I made a Google Drive of all your drawings. I watched every stream you did. I have everything you ever posted saved. Not only that though, you see, I have to admit I was a fan of you too. Hmm. You can't separate the work from the creator, at least in my opinion. You are the work. I know this because I know everything about you as well. I know where your parents went to school. I know all your friends' addresses. I know what you wear to sleep. I know your likes and dislikes. I know your political ideology. I know your goals and inner struggles. So I can see how similar you and your characters are. But I'm starting to feel as if I'm wrong. That I wear blinding rose-tinted glasses when I relate to a character and see the work as better than it is. But that's me, getting stupid crushes. And just to let you know, your information. I found out about it very easily. I didn't do this out of spite or hatred. I did this out of admiration. I admired you so deeply. I felt as if you are a god, a god who gave me a shred of attention. And I guess that's what made me fall for you. That opinion changed. I guess got to my senses when you were in the forest. I have this issue of being too impulsive. The flame of passion extinguishes so quickly. But that just means I'm getting closer to my goal. Trial and error. It's the price I'm willing to pay. I'm not gonna lie, it brought me a lot of pain, but with pain comes with strength. I'll have to think about this now, it's many problems coming at me at once. However, I will persevere, as usual. I don't know what to think, what is she gonna do to me? Right, I want to look at something. She goes to the corner of the room to pick up a plastic box. It seems to be filled with laptops and phones. She pulls one laptop out, looking closer I realize. Look what I got! Your laptop. I stopped over at your house the night I left you in the forest. Luckily you still had your keys with you. I couldn't look at it though, password protected. I could find out myself, but why? Well I can just ask you. So I would appreciate your help. Me. Spare yourself the dilemma. Here's the deal. Tell me the password, or die. Am I actually gonna die here? It's Lunar or Moon. Wow, easy. Thanks. By the way, why did you choose the name Luna for your persona? No, I like the night. Interesting. Not sure why I expected something deeper. Life's not a movie. It's on. This is exciting. I wonder what we'll find in here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice background. Not your art though. Weird. I expected you to be less humble. What do I look at first? Maybe your folders. Oh, it's so unorganized. Why do you just drop all your images in one folder? And it's all your drawings too, with gibberish file names. Painful for my eyes. That's a lot of drawings I've never seen before, wow. I guess you can't post stuff that doesn't please your target audience. That's a sad way to live. Surprisingly, I can't find any NSFW. I thought you'd be more of a degenerate. Or maybe you're hiding it somewhere else. No luck for me. Here's a little fun fact. It's easy to tell what your type is based on your drawings. You seem to like strong, dominant goth woman, hee <laughs> hee. I got the strong part down. Maybe you'd be into me if circumstances were any different. Just kidding. Enough of that for now. I can look at it more later. There's more interesting stuff to see. Your messages. Hmm. Oh, look at that. You got some while you were gone. Concerned friends, maybe. Hmm. Nope, only your clients. I'm sorry. Oh, where's my chat? Did you delete it? 
Oh wait, there it is, at the bottom. Why did you add every client to your private messages? Emails exist. That's how you get stalkers, you know. But not like it matters now. Reading my messages feels strange, but you probably don't even know it was me. Take a look. Sly Silent Fox. This is the beginning of your conversation with Sly Silent Fox. Hello, hope you have a good day. Oh, that's her, sorry. Hello, hope you have a good day. I just wanted to let you know I really love your art. I could never draw that good. Are your commissions open? Hey, thank you. My commissions aren't open at the moment. Thanks for the interest though. Love heart. Oh, okay. Can I add you as a friend? And then... A day later. Do you want to join my group chat? I'd love to have you there. I gulp. It feels like my stomach is tied into knots. Ha! Huh. I was so happy when you replied. It makes me feel warm inside thinking about it. You were surprised by how cute you were. You mean I was surprised by how cute you were. Just so you know, you don't act like that in real life at all. You're actually really sassy. Are you doing that because cuteness sells? That must be it. So naive, I bet a lot of people think you're their friend. But I found you first. Maybe I made a mistake giving up on you so fast. Dot. No, I can't think that. I'm too easily swayed. I need to move on. Hmm. Hey. I'm going to have to do something bad. Huh? First, your account. Social media. I'm going to delete it. I wish I could say it's because I want to get rid of evidence. Making the cops think you ran away. Something logical. But it's not. It's out of spite. I want to erase you. I can't stand you people sitting on your high horse with all that power. I'm just a peasant to you, and yet look at your situation. You are defenseless and powerless. Trust me, I hate it too. Well, that's the button right here. And gone it is. Who cares about the account? She's insane. She puts the laptop down and walks towards me, stopping in front of me. All your hard work gone. Hurts, doesn't it? Or maybe it doesn't. You could just ask people to follow your new account. They still have you in their memory after all. You know what you can't ask for though? Before I realize what happened, she launches at me and tackles me onto the bed. A sharp pain pulsates through my abdomen. I fight back with everything I have and try to get her off me. She lets go of me by herself and rips the knife she stabbed me with out of my torso. The blood drops cover everything. Stepping back, she watches as I groan in pain and tries to stop the bleeding. Ugh. Get away from me. I already did. I won't stab you again if you shut your mouth. You guys always piss me off when you start screaming. So I'm not the first one. Hmm. Ugh. The blood is getting everywhere. My heart rate is going crazy. Should I attack her? Should I scream? What can I do? I'm gonna die here. I'm gonna fucking die. What do you want from me? Nothing really. Ugh. I'll kill you. No, yeah? How are you gonna do that? I'll have to launch at her. I know she has a knife, but I don't care. This is the only thing I can do. Filled with adrenaline, I jump off the bed. I notice my feet aren't cooperating with me. They are numb and throw me off balance. Before I know it, I fall to the ground. I get to grab one of her ankles as I fall in hopes I can take her down with me. She rips it out of my grip with ease and kicks me away. Huh, sad. I try to get another grip on her, but notice she has something new in her hand. Did she pull something out of a drawer? My eyes focus on it more and... It's a gun, pointed at my face. Hey, you know what? I never really liked you now that I think about it. You're a genuinely boring person. I don't think people will remember you for long. I'm sorry, but you're nothing. And you know what I actually think about your work? It's... Oh. Bad and nothing special. Oh, it's nothing special. Okay. And that has been nothing special. I saw that first ending coming where we stabbed Olivia. Things were going way too smoothly. And it had to be a horror game, not some sort of weird Stockholm Syndrome love game, so... The moment where Olivia gets stabbed is kind of in that perfect spot where we're just about to believe, as the player, that we have succumbed to the Stockholm Syndrome and that we have completely given ourselves to Olivia and suddenly we stab her. There was no other time better to stab Olivia and that's fantastic. That's my favorite part about this game. Yet, if there's anything that this game does really well and I find quite fascinating, is the use of the live 2D as the animation tool to move Olivia, to make her have a little bit more life. 
rather than just be a still PNG. The facial expressions and the transitions between them, depending on the mood and whatever, really gave that extra kind of depth, especially those weird kind of insane looks that Olivia has. I think that's fantastic. And as the character moved from like when she was dying, as she was moving from like bleeding out, gargling, and her eyes rolling to the back of her head, that was really creepy. That was creepy, it was unsettling, it was unnerving, because it was a moving live 2D character and not a still PNG. I respect that a lot. That's kind of all I have to say. My name is Mayhem Sar, and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.